What are three words that would describe your practice? Identity, culture and representation. Who has had an influence on your practice? Is there a favorite quote? Yinka Shanabari, Seydou Keita, Abdullah Konate, Grada Kilomba, Sidney Serkaira, Carrie May Wims, amongst others. A quote that I like a lot is from James Baldwin and is Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. And another one from him as well is People are trapped in history and history is trapped in them. What ideas do you want viewers to engage with through your artwork? I want the viewer to familiarize themselves with the presence of the black body and culture in art spaces where Western classic art is predominant. What are the obstacles you face in the production of your art practice? To produce my work, I depend on people who are willing to come forward and strip themselves of insecurities, to share their personal histories with me, as well as posing for my photos, which are later on turned into stencils. And not many people are willing to do that due to the personal and intimate contact of my work. To whom do you go for help when you hit a block or have difficulties in your creative process? Nobody really. I get a good part of my inspiration while reading history books or listening to uh, artists of colors podcast such as Seeing Color. Apart from being an artist, what other jobs have you done? Oh, so many. In Portugal, I worked with children at summer camps. I also did customer assistant jobs in department stores, supermarkets, restaurants. In the UK, I worked as a cleaner, as a kitchen assistant uh, in restaurant, as a picker and packer in factories. What new skills have you needed to learn for your current artwork? to use Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop for the preparation of my stencils uh, to be <clears throat> so that these can be laser cut later on, screen printing techniques to cut out stencils by hand. In your creative process, do you look into research outside of the art world? All the time. My research is very related to fields like history, sociology, cultural studies, and at times science also comes in handy to better understand concepts that I am presented with in my research. In what areas outside of the art world would you like to collaborate in future? Cultural studies. Could you describe the role of art in future in three words or phrases? I believe that uh, creativity is inherent to the human being. And I believe that what the human being will slowly uh, lose its spontaneity and freedom to be creative. Therefore, the role of the arts in the future, I hope, will be to rescue that creativity and spontaneity and bring it to surface in people's lives. Can you tell me about the role of the fabric in your art? Textiles gained importance in my current work, um, the importance that it now holds in my current work and practice. When I first researched the relationship between materials and cultural identity, and at the time I had a completely different understanding uh, of what is commonly called African print or wax print. I used to perceive this material as an arguably representative of African culture, as if such a thing could exist. How could the material 
simultaneously represent the culture of 54 diversely, uh, culturally diverse uh, countries. Doesn't make any sense. Well, I reached, um, I researched the origins of the materials and found out that it was mass produced by the Dutch who basically tried to copy an Indonesian fabric making process which used the wax um, to obtain brighter and longer color, brighter colors for longer time, longer time. And also tried to copy, the Dutch also tried to copy the patterns, the Indonesian patterns for this, this fabric. Uh, the idea was to commercialize this to an European clientele. Although being faced with the failure of this endeavor, in the 70s, the Dutch decided to turn their, their previous colonies in West Africa, which were now independent countries, um, and try to commercialize this, this material to them. Introducing these fabrics into West African market, uh, if successful, could create a f profitable commercial relationship between the Dutch and the West African countries. Um, in this respect, the bold colored fabrics were widely well accepted in the West African market. As, as a result of this, the Dutch producers of the wax print adapted the patterns on the fabrics to resemble the imagery of the West African day-to-day -day life. Uh, nowadays, 90% of this production um, is and was before to, kept in the Netherlands and nearly 100% of the clients live in the African continent or in its diaspora. The Dutch are not the only producers of the wax print nowadays, but still leads the production and the distribution worldwide. After learning the history of, of the wax print, I realized that textile plays such an important role in our self-understanding as cultural beings and decided to research more about other fabrics, including the most important one in my personal life, Panu di Pinti, and that is what I'm working with uh, for this residency. Panu di Pinti is um, originally from Guinea-Bissau, where I am originally from, and is culturally made only by men. It is passed uh, from father to son, a generation to the next generation, and only certain families um, know how to do it and pass this knowledge to, to their uh, predecessors, <coughs> to their next generation. Um, these fabrics are given to to people in different and different and important um, happenings in their lives, important moments. So some of them are made for birth ceremonies and given to the close family. Um, the other ones are made for wedding ceremonies. Again, it's given only to the close family of the, the individuals in question and for death ceremonies as well. Uh, <clears throat> the colors and the patterns and also the length and width um, does vary depending on the occasion, depending on the person in question, if it's someone important, the materials will be of better quality, um, important in society, I mean. Uh, yes, and also heavier, and it's only used in special occasions. can be worn, or it can be used as a um, bed, like a bed cloth, or tablecloth, or for the use too but mainly worn. In some of the pictures that the um, exhibition, in some pictures that I used for the stencils, I used this uh, fabric at the background 
as each of them had a specific meaning to me and was given to me in specific times of my life. Um, in one of the stencils I'm using a black and white one at the background that was given to me at my dad's um, ser uh, my dad's death ceremony. Uh, so the, the expression that you can see in the stencil is one of sadness and there's another one that's, that the fabric I'm using was given to me at the 15th anniversary, 15th anniversary of my, my grandmother's passing and that one the colors are bold so it's a, an orange and a yellow very bold colors uh, because it's, uh, it was someone of old age already who lived uh, a long life, a happy life and basically we were honoring her, mom uh, her memory after 15 years of her passing away so the colors are bolder and happier um, as the, the sentiment is different and in that one my expression is not as sad is of acceptance of something that happened and celebrating life, actually. There's another one that was given to me at my brother's birth, and that one basically is orange and green, really strong colors, and that one basically represents celebration of a new life. And I did take a picture with my daughter uh, using that one, um, as I didn't get the opportunity to have one made for her birth but that one of my brother's birth uh, does represent that to me and yes in my video presentation you can also see these photos and you can see these um, stencils that i'm talking about at the exhibition most happy memories from my childhood always related with my grandparents in a small village in Lithuania. I have very close relationship with my grandmother. She teached me about God and about life. Textile that she made reminds me about my roots, about my culture. I still could smell bread that she was making every Sunday. I can hear her prayings in the evenings and hear her voice. To me she has most beautiful voice. Two years ago I even recorded her to be able to listen her voice far away from home. Mm -hmm. Генси мяс кервотя и ланкас, Келя любим гвату перкала вас, Тяни я поляй сё, ир нам опореюс, Верб да мадайносё таудай нас. Ок и лек таулотя лек пету, Тай дэнги ланкик дайня ламанету, Po vakarėlį, po šaltinėlį, modu vėl svajo simę kartu. I love my grandmother so much and missed her deeply. Having textile that she made with her hands makes me feel safe here it is very important to me and i want my children know their roots and who they are